What's up, everybody? It's Justin. Welcome to Live Ask Me Anything, number 64. That's crazy. 64. A couple minutes late. I'm here. I'm huge. I'm tired of mass gains. It's ridiculous, guys. Uh, almost done. Almost done with mass gains. Almost done the one-month experiment. How much muscle can Justin put on in 30 days? It's looking like it's going to be somewhere between 10 to 15 pounds of straight muscle. None of my clothes fit. I look like a ridiculous person now. But anyway... Hey everybody, how you doing? What's up Jackie? What's up Judy? Let's get some more people in here that says there's more people than I can see. So when I go live on Facebook on my desktop, not really a desktop, it's a MacBook, um, but when I go live on my MacBook, I can't see everybody for some reason. I can see the little number thingy up there in the corner, tells me how many people are live, and then I see some of the names, but I don't see all of them. So anyway, I um, decided to do this as a kind of a free-for-all. I call these free-for-alls when I do, uh, or they really should be considered true AMAs, because a lot of times when I do these AMAs, if you've never seen one, this is a live Ask Me Anything with me, Justin Nolt, the founder and CEO of Clovis, building a healthy life together. Um, so usually... These AMAs, for whatever reason, back in the day, I started turning them into more presentations where I would just like present on specific topics, like there's a fasting AMA, there's a human metabolism AMA, there's a fat loss AMA, there's a lectins AMA, there's an estrogenics AMA, AMA on hormones, right? Like all these different kind of presentation styles that I do with a whiteboard that's right over there. Instead, you get, um, tonight you get Arnold. What's up, Arnold? You get Arnold and my bar decorations and my Jack Daniels barrel over there. <laughs> you get all that stuff instead of the whiteboard today because um, this is one of those episodes. But what's great is I launched a new little website page, ama.iamclovis.com, that allows people to submit questions before these go live. And then I run those through some fancy automation. They just pump into an Evernote notebook that I have, which is great. So I get to go in there and check out those questions, and I'm just going to answer them live, ask me anything. And then if some questions come in from people on the comment thread over here as well, I will answer those. So it's basically you guys just get to pick my brain for an hour. And that's what we're going to do here on this one. I was going to talk about protein, but I have a carnivore functional medicine doctor coming on the podcast tomorrow. So I'll talk about protein after that once he enlightens me because he is an expert and I am not an expert. You guys know this. I say it all the time. Not a doctor, don't play one on the internet, not an expert. I'm a musician. My bachelor's degree is in songwriting. Yet somehow I have 600 plus transformation stories of health and wellness because credentials are everything, right, everybody? <laughs> okay, moving on. Let's see who's here. Hey, Carla, Samantha, Jennifer, Judy, Stephanie. Hello, Stevie. Hello, Robert. What's up? Laura, Jackie, Casey. Casey, what's up? You're in here. Good. Jennifer's here. Awesome. Okay, so, um, I'm going to pull up this Evernote notebook. I have it here. I get a little nervous, though, because then I can't see myself, and I don't know. Some, it's very rare, but the feed has died on occasion on Facebook Lives, and it's a bummer if I don't know what happened. So I'll just be swiping back and forth and taking a look at your questions because I have them preloaded. So I thought that this one particular question would be a great place to start. I'm going to jump in because I was a couple minutes late, like a total dweeb, right? He's late to his own AMA, y'all. <laughs> okay, let's do this. I'm in a silly mood, guys. I'm sorry. I've been working my butt off all day and all day yesterday and the day before. A lot of work. But anyway, good things happening. Clovis is in a very good place right now. I'm super excited. I don't think I've ever been this excited for the future of Clovis. And there's a lot happening behind the scenes, and I can't share with you just yet. But I will share with you as it happens. You're going to see it happen. It's going to be public. So, you know, no big deal. We'll get there when we get there, everybody. Lovely. What's up? All right. I'm sure I'm write a song about Clovis. I haven't written a song in like three years. I don't know if I remember how to write songs. <laughs> I have no idea. All right, let's check this out. So let's dive in with this one because I think this was an overall a uh, good question for anybody who's considering Clovis. What is Clovis, right? I am a uh, basically a health coach. I'm a certified nutritional therapist, a certified specialist in sports nutrition, certified specialist in fitness nutrition, and I help people transform their lives. And I make custom nutrition plans for members of I Am Clovis and they get an approved foods list, they get custom macros, and coaching with me one-on-one, -on -one, and I teach them how to change their lives for the better. And I have a very high success rate doing so, fancy pants. So I thought this question was totally relevant to anybody consuming any Clovis content. So I'm just gonna read you these questions, and then we'll hit them. Um, wow, I have a big list of questions here. I don't know if I'm gonna get to all these, but I'll try my best. Okay, so question. Just started a week ago, and I'm all in, but I find it hard to hit all my intake goals for the day. Do you have any good tricks or ideas such as snacks or when to eat? 
Good question. Now, I've addressed this in the past, and sometimes you get tough love, Justin, right? But tough love, Justin, only ever operates from a place of complete and total love for you guys. I want you guys to have the best possible chance at success ever. I want you to have the best possible chance of a healthy life forever. I want to give you the best possible chance of a future that all those other programs that you've tried throughout your life didn't actually give you. They didn't give you tools. You sign up for a plan, you get a PDF printout. If it fits your macros, here you go. And here's your DVD program to do. And that's it. No customer service, no coaching, no nothing, unless you're going to go pay somebody thousands of dollars to do that. And then even the personal trainers let you down because they don't know anything about nutrition, right? I want to avoid that at all costs. So what happens here when people are struggling to hit particular particular goals like hitting their fat protein or I mean their fat macro or their protein macro or their carb macro, right? So here's the thing. When I make a when I make a plan for you, that plan is very lengthy. Anybody who's who's in here who's gotten a custom nutrition plan for me knows that it's quite a lengthy email with a lot of instructions. Now, some people love that it's a lengthy email. Those are my people. Those are the details people, right? And then others don't necessarily love it, so they scan the email really quick and they think they got the gist of it, or they just go to all the clickable things. I know this to be true. People just find the clickable things. Ooh, approved foods list, that's clickable, give me that. Okay, cool, oh, oh, this one's clickable, give me that. And they just skip the text and they click on the stuff, right? Their attachment that is their custom macros, they go right to the attachment, they go right to the approved foods list, and they skip the instructions in the email. I know this to be true because I give you very specific instructions. So don't just scan the email when you get it from me. One of those instructions that I give you flat out says, if you try to wing this, it's going to be far more difficult. And that's true, okay? But again, people scan, think they get the gist, the gist of it, and they just try to dive right in. That's a really bad idea. So I actually have this message that I send to people. Um, there's a great program called ATEX where I can send things to people that I say all the time, right? Because I have over 340 one-on-one -on -one clients now, and sometimes they ask the same questions, right? So I have this message that I call teach a man to fish, right? And people get sent this when they, when they ask if there's a meal plan or what food should they eat or whatever. Now remember, I tell you specifically in your plan, take your approved foods list, sit down with it. I don't care if it takes you an hour, tough, find an hour, right? This is very important stuff because you need to understand, you need to relearn how food works, what food is made of. I don't like that I could stop most people on the street and they wouldn't know that, you know, a tablespoon of grass-fed butter has 12 grams of fat and no carbohydrates and no protein. Or they wouldn't know that meat is mostly protein and fat and is zero carbohydrates. Or they think that the only carbohydrates are bread and pasta. They don't realize that carbohydrates are in every single plant food ever. They all contain carbohydrates. They think of carbs as bread or pasta or starch, right? People literally don't know what food is made of. So I treat this, my whole Clovis plan is the idea of teach a man to fish. If I give you a fish, I feed you for a day. If I teach you to fish, I feed you for a lifetime. You need to learn these skills. So you need to do exactly what I told you in your custom nutrition plan. That is sit down, take the time to plan your perfect day. If it's Monday, plan your Tuesday, okay? Sit down, circle your favorite foods on that approved foods list, look them up in Carb Manager or look them up on good old Google, find the nutrition facts, and however long it takes you, you plan out a perfect day that hits your macros with the foods that you love. Take the time to do this. Preferably do that two or three times with different foods that you like so you have multiple days. Oh, it's a travel day. I'm going to be eating more of this. I'm going to bring canned tuna with me or whatever, you know? So now I am going to give you a few tips because you asked me this directly, but I just want you to understand you really, really need to sit down and make us a priority to learn what foods are made of because we don't know. Most Americans have no idea the macronutrient contents of most foods. It's why when everyone tracks, they're like, how have I been eating 400 grams of net carbs a day and I didn't even know it because we don't know what foods are made of, okay? So tips, I guess if you're, if you're short on carbs, you want to load up, load up on leafy green vegetables, uh, broccoli, spinach, artichokes, asparagus, kale, that kind of stuff. Um, now, obviously, you can get into like the, the resistant starch or the starchy carbs, like sweet potatoes. If you have carbs left to fill for the day, that's a carb heavy food. Uh, root vegetables. I love like beets and turnips. I think beets and turnips are great. Carrots have quite a few carbohydrates in them, right? Um, now, if you're looking at fat, then 
basically, I like you to get your fats from animal products, mostly like whole eggs or, avo uh, well, avocados being plants, but whole eggs, grass-fed beef. Um, then you can get into nuts, like macadamia nuts, walnuts, pecans. Fish has a lot of good fats in it, like salmon, you know, fatty, wild-caught salmon. Tuna has a little bit of fat, that kind of thing. Um, then you can get into the snacky foods, like 85% dark chocolate or supplements like MCT oil. I love uh, C8 MCT oil. Um, Kiss My Keto, you get a deal on Kiss My Keto as an I Am Clovis member. Um, then you could really get into the convenience foods like like uh, Barney brand almond butter, things like that. It's just There's countless options, countless options for fat. Same thing for protein. Protein, always go for animal products. Like again, grass-fed beef or wild-caught fish or chicken, whatever, just animal protein, right? But just know that depending on the animal protein that you're getting, like grass-fed beef is going to have quite a bit of fat. A big ribeye is going to have quite a bit of fat. Chicken is going to have little to no fat and mostly all protein. You just need to know what these foods are made up of and you need to plan. That's it. So that was a long answer to that question, but you really, really need to plan. It's a really big deal, okay? Um, so the other thing is that kind of runs into this next question, um, I may have just kind of answered this question now that I'm looking at it. So let me read this question for you. Question, am I stuck with sweet potatoes as my only healthy carb? Aside from PPP, perfect paleo powder, I usually need approximately 20 grams of carbs per day, but no additional fats or proteins. Okay, this is literally the same exact answer, but a little bit different. One, you didn't plan. Just throw that out there. You didn't follow the instructions and plan, right? You have to plan. Two, I know you didn't go through the approved foods list, and I know you didn't look up any of those other foods, particularly vegetables, if you think that sweet potatoes are your only option for 20 grams of net carbohydrates, right? Every plant food on planet Earth is loaded with carbohydrates. So you have tons of options. I already named a bunch of them. Carrots, beets, turnips, sweet potatoes, green plantains are on there, like resistant starches, yucca. Try things like that, right? There's all sorts of carbohydrates that you can get that you have access to, but you need to sit down and take a look at them. Now, the other thing that I see about this question is the idea of, well, what if I have 20 grams of carbs left, but I've already hit my protein and fats? Well, one, like 100 grams of sweet potato, I think is like 17 grams of net carbohydrates, so that's a good option. But if you're looking at it like, but I had 120 grams of protein and I hit it dead on, and then I had 100 grams of sweet potato, and now I'm, I've gone over two grams on my protein because sweet potato does contain a very small amount of protein, right? If you're getting that particular about it, stop that. I don't want you to do that. I'm not trying to give people orthorexia here and be crazy. You need to hit everything dead on. Like I've, t I've told you guys this before. Nutrition facts are notoriously inaccurate, all of them. Carb manager is notoriously inaccurate because the nutrition facts are notoriously inaccurate. Calories, macros, all this stuff, it's a flawed system. It's just the best that we have. So you can't freak out. I'm trying to give you a blueprint, a foundation, right? So the other thing to remember here is if you're eating whole foods, I am very happy. If you're eating whole foods, I am very happy. So I don't want you to sit there and be like, I need 20 grams of just net carbohydrates and zero protein and zero fat. Because then you're looking at tablespoons of just white sugar is pretty much the only way you can pull that off. And I'm not going to allow that, right? Because single macros don't exist in nature. I want you guys to remember this stuff. The only reason we have to track macros and I have to get your health back on track is because we stop eating whole foods. I say this all the time, eat whole foods, change the world. Eat whole foods, change the world. If we only ate what existed in nature, we would never be in this mess to begin with, okay? So you're never gonna find plant matter in nature that's 20 grams of net carbohydrates and zero protein and zero fat. And you're never gonna find 10 grams of powdered collagen peptides that you can scoop in your coffee. You're not gonna find that in nature, it doesn't exist. Okay, so I'm not worried about this minuscule, oh, I'm 20 grams of carbs over, but if I eat that sweet potato, I'm gonna go over my protein. I don't care. If you are eating whole foods, I'm very happy. Now, if you say, okay, Justin said eat whole foods and you eat five sweet potatoes in a day and you eat 500 grams of net carbohydrates, that's a different story. But these tiny little one gram, two gram, five gram, it's crazy. Don't worry about it, right? Now, the other thing is, I have a, a video online on YouTube of me saying hit your macros. When I say hit your macros, I mean hit your macros. I'm actually cooler with you going over your macros than being under your macros. I'm much, much cooler with you going over your macros than under your macros. Always remember that. If you're 20 grams shy and you're net carbohydrates and you're like, but I already hit fat and protein, so I give up. No, 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 no. Eat the sweet potato. Trust me, okay? Hit those macros. I want you to hit your macros. It's a big deal. Let's see. You got a couple comments over here. 
There was a book about someone that cured their cancer with carrots. Nope, they definitely didn't do that. So uh, Casey, <laughs> just I can say that because I love you, right? You need to be very, very careful here because details matter. Nobody cured their cancer with carrots. That didn't happen. They simply eliminated processed junk from their diet. They probably juiced carrots. If they were in a center, they probably did intravenous vitamin, intravenous vitamin C or intravenous glutathione or other antioxidants. There's a lot more to that story. Nobody ever cured cancer with carrots. No, that never happened. But the problem is that's the takeaway that people get. It's like Mr. Medium, the medical medium, telling people he's going to cure shit with celery, and he's simply wrong, okay? So you just got to be very, very careful with those comments. Details matter. Details very much matter, okay? God, tell my dad he needs to eat whole foods. All dads need to eat whole foods. All dads and moms and brothers and sisters and little brothers and little sisters and cousins and nieces and nephews all need to eat whole foods. More of them, okay? Period. What else we got? All right, next question. Okay, here's another carbohydrate one. Um, question, what's a good carb to eat post-workout when dealing with candida overgrowth? Ooh. All right, let me read this again. What's a good carb to eat post-workout when dealing with candida overgrowth if I don't want to drink post-workout perfect paleo powder every time? I don't think I'm gonna answer your question directly. Um, okay, listen. If you, I'm reading it. Carb to eat post-workout when dealing with candida growth. Okay, first and foremost, if you have a candida overgrowth, you probably need a functional medicine doctor. Functional medicine, medical doctor. I wanna be clear about that. And I can explain that if you need me to, leave a comment. Um, you probably need a functional medicine. At the very least, you need a custom nutrition plan from me. Come to me. Because when I deal with things like SIBO or candida, these bacterial overgrowths, I have a whole separate foods list that people get. They don't get the normal foods list from me. Um, I have a separate foods list for that. But I really, I kind of want to flip this on its head and make you think about something. So one, let's talk about post, post-workout carbohydrates, right? I just put on, again, 10, somewhere between 10 to 15 pounds of muscle. Not exactly sure. It differs on the day when I measure. Um, somewhere between 10 to 15 pounds of muscle in 30 days on what would be considered a low carbohydrate by virtually any fitness influencer standards, right? A low carbohydrate diet. So do you need carbohydrates post-workout? I would argue no. Um, I would love to see your workouts, but I am fairly certain that you're probably not depleting a ton of glycogen with your workouts. You probably don't need post-workout carbohydrates. And even if you are depleting a ton of glycogen on your, on your workouts, the only reason you would need post-workout carbohydrates is if you're trying to build muscle, right? If you're like, I want to build a bunch of muscle, then, okay, we can talk about post-workout carbohydrates. How to Now, first, we'd have to talk about how to deplete your glycogen levels properly because that's this whole issue with glycogen depletion and replenishment is most people don't actually burn that much glycogen because they don't do workouts that are specifically targeted at burning through glycogen, okay? So I would argue that you don't need post-workout carbohydrates unless you are actively trying to put on muscle mass. Then we would need to talk about glycogen post-workout, Okay. Uh, I mean, glucose, carbohydrates, you get what I'm saying. Uh, glucose, glycogen, carbohydrates, kind of interchangeable for the sake of this discussion, just to clear that up. So you probably don't need carbs post-workout, first and foremost. Secondly, if you have a candida overgrowth, my only priority for you is to not have a candida overgrowth. If you're working with me and you say, hey, I want to put on 10 pounds of muscle, how do I do that with this candida overgrowth? I go, no, 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 no. We need to figure out this candida growth first. We need to take care of this. We need to do away with this candida growth. We need to get you past this so we can talk about proper nutrient absorption. We can talk about proper inflammation levels. You're not going to recover from those workouts properly if you got a whole bunch of inflammation because you're dealing with a candida overgrowth or leaky gut or intestinal permeability or anything like that. You need to fix that first. So even if you have fat loss or muscle building goals, those go out the window when you have a specific issue like candida overgrowth that you're dealing with. Let's handle the candida first. Your question should be, how do I get rid of candida? Email me, justin at iamclovis.com. That's a big deal, okay? Good listen while I'm at the gym. What if you're really broke but want to eat better? Okay, I've covered this a bazillion times. If you're really broke, stop buying junk, first things first. Um, you don't need more money to eat healthy. You do need to reallocate your funds. So the best thing is sign up for a free trial, uh, just iamclovis.com slash start. You can sign up for a free seven-day trial, which will get you access to my approved foods list. So you can see the approved foods list, throw away anything that's not on that list. 
And when you go to the grocery store, don't buy anything that's not on that list. So it's not that I'm asking you to spend more money. It's once you remove Cheerios and Doritos and Oreos and Capri Sun and orange juice and pancakes and oatmeal, once you remove all that junk from your grocery list, you're saving hundreds of dollars. Now you have the money to go buy healthy stuff, but you have to be willing to give up all of the junk. Give up all the junk, save your money only for the good stuff that's best for you, okay? What else we got? All right, next question. Ah, that's a good one. This is a good one because my Clovis Academy peeps have already handled this and they're awesome and they'll probably, I'm hoping someone's gonna have a link for me because I just read this question and I don't have a link for it. But okay, uh, what salt, question, what salt supplement can I use instead of salt shots? I understand the value of salt shots and believe in them. It's just not realistic with work and how on the go I am. I totally disagree. I think you're wrong here, right? I don't care how busy you are, right? Because I'm super busy. I'm on the go all the time. I'm thinking about like I have a gig this weekend. I'm gonna be gone sun up to sundown, driving three hours there, three hours back, performing a gig. I'm going to be on stage playing, networking with people. It's going to be an all day thing, right? And I'm going to have plenty of salt. I'm going to have plenty of meat sticks and tuna and whatever I need to bring with me and paleo powder, all the things that I need, right? So on the go is not an excuse for no salt. Now, let me tell you the best way to do it, the cheapest way to do it. And you're going to love this. So um, somebody may have a, a link for this because it was been in the Clovis Academy. And it's been in I Am Clovis too. But on Amazon, you can literally buy these little salt shakers that are made for travel. I believe they're, they're probably intended for camping. People like out in the wilderness hiking and stuff and doing a quick time check. Um, yeah, people out in the wilderness hiking, that kind of thing. But you can get these little shakers that you just fill with salt. And you can fill like multiple grams of salt in this thing that you can just sprinkle in your water all throughout the day. You take that thing, you can put that thing in the pocket of your jeans. It's so small. It doesn't even matter, right? You just carry the thing with you. People put them in their purse or their little wristlets. Just put them in whatever. It's particularly good if you're out drinking. Bring salt with you out drinking, everybody. And in between your liquor drink, have a water drink and put a bunch of salt in there. I promise, I promise you're going to love me the next day, right? Because I like to go out and have a few drinks and I don't like feeling like crap in the morning, right? I also have a lead on a supplement for hangovers, but that's a different story for a different day. I just had a phone call about it the other day. It was really weird. Um, but anyway, yeah, you can travel with salt. So just get on Amazon, get one of those little salt shaker things. Uh, maybe somebody here will have a, a link. If anybody has a link, post it in the comments. Um, that's one way to do it because here's the thing. I take in because of my, well, one, I'm doing mass gains right now, but when I, I usually work out a lot, I don't work out a lot during mass gains. I only work out twice a week and I hate it. I want to work out more. Um, but usually I'll train somewhere between six to eight training sessions in a week, just myself personally. So I'll be taking five to eight grams of sodium a day. So for example, there's a great new product called LMNT electrolytes, LMNT, the letters LMNT electrolytes. And, um, they're on Instagram at, at drink LMNT. You can check them out. But uh, Rob Wolf is part of this company, and he's the one who really turned me on to this work about electrolytes and sodium and stuff. They have these fantastic little electrolyte uh, packets, and I just bought my first box of them. They're delicious. They're absolutely fantastic. But the only issue there for someone like me is there's about 1,000 milligrams of sodium, one gram per serving. So these things come in at a price point of, I think, about like $1.40 a packet, right? If I, if I only got my sodium from prepackaged electrolytes, I would spend an astronomical amount of money getting the, the sodium intake that I need. I'd have to eat five to eight of those packets a day. Are you kidding me? It'd be like a $10 a day habit to get my electrolytes in. Or I get a little shaker that I can bring with me on the go and I put Redmond sea salt in there where I can get a gram of sodium in half a teaspoon. Just half a little teaspoon, right? That's it. That's the way to do it. I'm telling you. So you got to figure out how to make this work. Make it work for you. Get the get the little holder with salt. Really make it work. It's a big, big deal. What else we got? I like to go out and have excessive drinks. Casey, I have gone out and had excessive drinks with you. Who are you telling? I know. I've witnessed these things. <laughs> what else we got? Explain what the salt does again. Salt, okay, that's a, its whole episode. Go, go watch uh, Blood Pressure, Salt, and Sex because salt literally does everything. You need to go watch that episode. Um, let me grab you a link real quick. So first things first, salt is more in charge of your hydration than water is, and people don't realize that, but usually dehydration cases are actually electrolyte deficiency cases. Crap, I don't know if I can find this. Where is my blood pressure link? Ah, there we go. Okay, got it. It's AMA number 42. AMA number 42. Let me give you a link here. 
Uh, sodium is literally a cure-all for everything. And if you want to go deeper in that too, there is a uh, book called The Salt Fix. Salt is literally responsible for just about everything you can think. I mean, your neurons communicating with each other, your hydration levels, your blood pressure, it literally regulates your blood pressure, which is why it's crazy that the AHA tells you you need less than 1300 milligrams a day. That amount puts you at the highest risk level for cardiac events. It's insane. Everything we know about salt is completely wrong. Um, watch that blood pressure, uh, blood pressure, salt and sex AMA. That's a really important one. Shared that link. What else we got here? LMNT on Instagram at drink LMNT. On, on Instagram, at drink LMNT. Do you recommend alkaline water? No, not at all. Um, okay, we're gonna get into this because I have another question about this. So uh, I remember I saw a question about this and I can touch on your question and their question at the same time. So let's jump into that because I just read that. Um, where is it? Hold on, guys. I'll find this, I promise. There's so many questions. A sales rep, here we go. That's I knew it was about a sales rep. Okay, question. A sales rep stopped by our gym to drop off alkaline water and then tried to sell to our owner. I think it was some type of system to the tune of about $1,000. The sales pitch is that it helps with energy, makes your pre-workout supplements more effective, etc. I call BS, but interested in your take. You would be correct to call BS. It is complete and utter BS. I did an entire AMA on this called the alkaline myth. Um, it's complete nonsense, right? Here's the thing is, and we're gonna, actually, this is gonna lead me into a question about ketones that I have as well, right? So a lot of people think that they're changing these things in their body, like they wanna measure their ketone levels, or I changed the pH level of my blood. See, I have a pee stick, and I peed on a stick, and I changed the pH level in my body. Ah, listen, you cannot change the pH level of your blood through dietary intake. I repeat, you cannot change the pH level of your blood through the food that you put in your mouth. If you could, you would die, period. pH in the body is ridiculously regulated, ridiculously regulated. You go too high, you go too low, you die, I mean almost instantly. So people are like, but look at these pee sticks. It says I changed the pH level in my body. No, what happens is if you have a higher pH level, the body will regulate this by excreting things it doesn't need, right? The body excretes things that we don't need in feces and urine. So that doesn't mean that the pH, the, what, what, what the pH level of your urine is has virtually no correlation whatsoever to the levels in your blood. And the same thing goes for ketones. When people think they're measuring ketones, they pee on a ketone stick and that, that stick is really purple. They're like, I have so many ketones in my urine. This is fantastic. I'm in deep ketosis. No. The ketones are in your urine because your body's not using them. It's peeing them out. It's getting rid of them, okay? So you can change the pH level in your mouth. You can change the pH level of your saliva by drinking water, drinking coffee or whatever. You can change the pH level in your urine. You can do all these things, this whole alkaline acid thing. You cannot change the pH level in your blood. You just can't. And an acidic environment doesn't cause cancer, which is the whole argument of the alkaline diet hypothesis, doesn't cause cancer. The cancer causes the acidic environment, right? The, the tumor, that's the, the, the cells that are malfunctioning are putting acid into the system. Yes, your blood pH level goes up. Cancer can raise the pH levels of your blood because it's a disease. You're living in a diseased state before the, the pH level of your blood ever changes and it's very dangerous when the pH level of your blood changes. This idea of alkaline water, alkaline anything that they're selling to you with a price tag on it is nonsense. The biochemistry just doesn't work. You would die, okay? It's really, really crazy that people are still buying into this stuff. It just, it's staggering to me. But if you're getting the wool pulled over your eyes because people just don't understand this stuff. It's a big deal, right? It's funny because most doctors say no salt. Yeah, exactly. And most doctors have less than 20 hours of nutrition training in their entire career. They get less than four hours of nutrition maximum per year in medical school. They know nothing about nutrition. Doctors are not nutritionists. That'd be like asking Floyd Mayweather how to do jujitsu. That's a stupid move. Is he an expert? Yes, he's an expert in boxing. He's not an expert in jujitsu, right? Asking a doctor for nutrition advice, not the way to go, ever. What else we got? I know with losing more weight, I'm going to have more sagging skin. Yes, let's talk about this. I have a question about that too. Um, you're not necessarily going to have more sagging skin. It's just a matter of doing it correctly uh, versus doing it incorrectly, okay? So this is a big deal. Let's touch on this. I'm going to find the, uh, let me see if I can find. Yeah, yeah. So here was the question. It said, uh, question, as my weight comes off, will my quote apron belly, 
end quote, SAG. Can I prevent that from happening? So yes, I talked about this in uh, AMA number 25, which is called Fasting Facts from Fat Loss to Longevity. So there's a story of a man who fasted. This is true. It's the longest medically supervised fast of all time. He was like 362 pounds or something like that. No, uh, I can't remember his weight. I'm, I'm mixing up the days, but he fasted for like 386 days, literally over a year fasted. Water fast. I think they started giving him electrolyte tablets at one point. And people were like, what? And he got down to like 185 pounds with no sagging skin. Wait, what? Crazy. How did that happen, right? Everybody has accepted that this sagging skin thing is just going to happen from fat loss because the only way that you're taught how to, how to lose fat is via the fitness industry, and they don't know what the fuck they're doing, right? So that's the big issue is you get this saggy skin because you're usually doing extreme caloric deprivation. You're starving yourself while giving yourself just enough so that the body can't utilize autophagy and apoptosis, which are the two things that help get rid of this sagging skin. So let me explain to you first why this man that fasted for so long didn't have sagging skin because there's a difference between caloric restriction and zero calories whatsoever. Those are two very different things. So when you have zero calorie intake whatsoever, when you are fasting, your basal metabolic rate actually goes up because noradrenaline spikes. So let's get a little bit nerdy here, right? So noradrenaline spikes, your BMR goes up, you still burn the same number of calories even though you're not taking in any food, right? And um, growth hormone can actually go up in the same time. It can go up by like 300%. It's really crazy when you're fasting. But the biggest thing about fasting after longer periods of time at least over six, if you're, if you're fat adapted, maybe you could have some autophagy after 16 to 24 hours, but autophagy is usually going to happen 18 to 24 after that mark. Ap apoptosis is going to come later. So quick little, the best way to think about this is if you have a car, right? The cell in your body, a cell is a car. If the cell has damaged parts and you take the damaged parts off and put new parts on the cell and rebuild the same cell, well, now you have essentially a new car with new parts. And that's what autophagy is. The body goes in and replaces the malfunctioning parts of the cell. You almost have a brand new cell, okay? Now, apoptosis is programmed cell death. Your body metabolizes its own cells, literally kills them and eats them, okay? Interesting. So everything in your body is made of amino acids. Amino acids plug together like Legos to form cells, uh, to, to form proteins. Proteins click together to form cells. Cells click together to form tissue. My fingers, my skin, my eyeballs, my tongue, everything is made of tissue, which is all made of cells, okay? Now what happens when you lose a lot of weight, particularly if you were fasting, like this guy's fasting for 382 days or whatever, and his body thinks it's starving, whatever, and it's, it's burning body fat and all these things. Well, at the same time, it's also going, what else can I use for fuel that is hanging around, literally hanging around, that I don't need. Oh, I have all this sagging apron belly skin here. Why don't I eat some of that? It's really crazy. It's literally the body metabolizing itself, right? And that can tighten up all that skin. It's really unbelievable. But the issue is when you do these crash diets of like, I'm gonna eat 700 calories a day, and you're eating 700 calories a day, you're taking in protein. Protein is what kills apoptosis and autophagy. Okay, so if you're taking in protein, you're not gonna get apoptosis and autophagy. Now, technically, it's only certain amino acids that make that happen, things like leucine, so you could do bone broth collagen. Okay, this is where it gets really nerdy, and this is why you work with me, okay, because I know all this shit in my brain, right? I'm trying to get this out to you. There are certain amino acids that disrupt autophagy worse than others, okay? But to put a blanket statement on it, protein stops autophagy and apoptosis. That's a big problem, okay? So when you're doing this extreme caloric restriction diet, like most people do, you're eating 800, 900 calories and you're working out for three hours a day, blah, 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 right? You're going to lose body mass for sure. You're at a massive caloric deficit. You're gonna lose body mass and then you're gonna have all this flabby excess skin hanging off and that's nasty and then people gotta get surgery. Now the thing is, if you do this wrong from the jump, you can't just go fast after the fact, right? It's, it's going to be an issue. There's going to be some cosmetic issues there. And then you get to a point where you're past a certain age and all these things. Sometimes you just need to accept it. Um, you can't just solve these things. It really has to be from losing the weight loss to getting to your target weight has to be done correctly the entire time to really stop that from happening, if that makes sense. Okay. What else we got here? Uh, there you go. There's a, a, a link. The 450 pound man fasted for over a year, lost more than half his weight. Fantastic. Yeah, look at this, Shannon. I birthed eight children, lost more than 90 pounds, and have very little loose slash extra skin since starting Clovis almost a year ago. Let me read that again. 
I've birthed eight children, lost more than 90 pounds, and I have very little loose slash extra skin since starting Clovis almost a year ago. If you do this correctly, you can prevent that from happening. It drives me nuts that people think, I've just accepted that I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to have a bunch of skin hanging off. Better schedule my tummy tuck for next year, right? No, that's insane. It shouldn't be that way. It's crazy. Uh, Michelle, I am a cancer patient and was told to up my alkaline. Yes, of, of course you were, and you need a new doctor. Find yourself a new doctor. Go to ifm.org and find a doctor who specializes in cancer or cancer prevention or post-cancer treatment. Get yourself a better doctor because yours doesn't know what he's doing. Sorry. <laughs> what else we got? Um, okay. Comments to see what other questions I got. Oh, the, 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 uh, the ketones thing. Okay. Let's touch on ketones. How much time do I got? These things fly by. I love these episodes. Okay. Ketones. So this person asked, we're going to go back to this, uh, urine testing, blood testing, all these things. So ketones, my functional medicine doctor asked me if I measured my ketones. I don't know how or what to do or what to buy. Okay. So here's the thing. I call this chasing ketones. I don't know if your functional medicine is suggesting that you, your your doctor is suggesting that you do this. I suggest that you don't. I think that chasing ketones is a problem. I think that chasing ketones leads to non-compliance. I think that chasing ketones leads to a ton of self-sabotage. What I mean by chasing ketones is when we talk about the ketogenic diet, the idea is to enter into a state of ketosis in which you, if you are actually in ketosis, then you can, in fact, be certain that your body is burning fat for fuel. But you don't have to be in deep ketosis for your body to be burning fat for fuel. You can achieve this while not being in ketosis, okay? That's the big trick. So everyone gets obsessed with chasing ketones. Now, there are multiple ways to measure ketones. That would be the most accurate way is going to be a blood ketone monitor. I use one called the Precision Extra, okay, because I can measure blood glucose and ketones because I'm a total nerd. Um, I once stayed in nutritional ketosis for six weeks straight with daily blood draws, okay? There's also a ketonics breath monitor. I believe there's more breath monitors out now that you can find. Um, but for blood, there's still the Precision Extra. Keto Mojo is another company that I think is doing it for like a dollar per test, which is really good because Precision Extra is like five bucks per stick for ketones. Um, all these things are really ch- cheap for blood glucose, but not for ketones. Um, but the other way, because it's cheap, everyone goes to CVS or Walgreens and they get themselves ketone urine strips and they pee on them, right? And in the beginning, when they switched to a very low carb, very high fat diet, which again, Clovis is not keto. I don't suggest keto for everybody. I don't think we're designed to be in ketosis all the time. I don't think that is accurate. And I particularly hate the internet version of ketosis and ketogenic diet with Starbucks and Wendy's keto menus. All of you people, shut up. Stop talking about anything please. Okay. (laughs) So the thing about measuring ketones is what happens in the beginning when you go very low, very high fat, very low carbohydrate, and you pee on a urine stick, it's going to go dark purple. That means you're in deep ketosis and everyone gets excited. I'm in deep ketosis. Oh my God, I peed on the stick. It turned purple. I'm in deep ketosis. What is happening is your body doesn't know how to use ketones yet. It hasn't learned. You're metabolically inflexible because you've been burning carbohydrates for decades, right? Your body literally forgot how to burn fat for fuel. So now you're giving all these fatty acids. The fatty acids are converting into ketones. The body doesn't know how to efficiently use them, so it excretes them in the urine, registers on a little pee stick, and you get all excited thinking that you did something good and you're burning fat. Now, so what happens down the line? Weeks later, when you are now fat adapted and your body can efficiently use those ketones, it starts using them instead of excreting them in your urine. So you'll have somebody who has been keto for four weeks, five weeks. Now their pee strips are registering that they're not in ketosis anymore. It's just not even showing up in the stick and they panic self-sabotage. Boom. It's all over from there because they're chasing ketones. I want that purple stick. Oh my God. Next thing you know, they're like decreasing calories and carbohydrate. They're eating one gram of net carbs per day and they're eating 300 grams of fat and they're tweak, 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 tweaking because they care about this freaking pea stick. It's ridiculous. It's a bad idea. So I don't recommend that people ever chase ketones. Again, it's the difference between what your body actually using and what your body excrete is excreting. Now, if you really want to test this and you really want to see if you're in ketosis, I recommend blood strips every step of the way, every single time. Keto Mojo is a great option because it's so cheap, even though I don't own one. Um, but there are reasons where you would want to be in ketosis or you'd want to measure it. I just don't recommend trying to stay in, in ketosis 100% of the time. I think that's really silly. You just don't need to do that, right? 
So anyway, that's a little rundown of uh, are you measuring if you're in ketosis, um, why, how to do it. Um, I think there are some really powerful breath monitors now. I have one called Ketonix that's now is probably five years old maybe, maybe five years old because I was measuring ketones way back then. Um, but I haven't used it in forever. I don't know if it even would work now. And I bet you they have newer models and all this stuff. So I'm not really familiar with the breath ones, but that can be a good way to do it. Um, yeah, there's a lot of ways to measure ketones. Anyway, hope that answered your question. What else we got here? All right, let's look through. What are some good ones? We talked about sweet potatoes. We talked about post-workout. Ah, here's a good one. Okay, question. Is animal protein hard for the body to digest? I deal with bloating, and someone recently asked me if eating all this protein was tough on my digestion. Made me think a little, so I thought I'd ask you. Nope, not tough on your digestion at all. Why? Because human beings are literally designed to digest animal protein. That's what we're designed to do. Um, we are not designed to digest plant matter, which again, I have a carnivore coming on the show tomorrow, but I've done a deep dive on this now. And as you guys know, I'm big on lectins. Don't like lectins. My approved foods list doesn't contain the most lectin rich foods. It absolutely doesn't. Plants are irrefutably trying to kill us in a lot of ways. Many of them are. Many of the plants we just simply have not evolved to eat. So if you're dealing with issues of bloating, that's almost always going to be digesting carbohydrates, or it could be fats, let's say, if you have uh, some kind of issue with the gallbladder or bile or anything like that. Um, protein is probably the easiest for your body to digest outside of what would be simple sugars, which is why people love simple sugars, right? So you could drink sugar water, you drink a big mason jar full of sugar water all day long, and you'd have zero problem with digestion, right? It's just, it's because it's already in an extracted form. It's taken away from the whole food, right? From the sugar cane or whatever, it's taken out of the whole food form. So the body is literally made to digest animal proteins. And the difference is like carbohydrates are literally fermentable in the gut. Like if you're already dealing with digestive problems, like the person we talked about earlier, right? If you have candida or SIBO or something like that, these carbohydrates can sit in your gut. If you have stomach acid issues and you're not digesting well, those carbohydrates can literally ferment in your gut. They become like fermented carbohydrates and that can lead to acid reflux. You feel those things and most people think it's too much stomach acid. It's usually not too much stomach acid, it's usually too little. These carbohydrates are not being digested and it makes a burning sensation because it's fermenting. As we know, when you ferment things in a mason jar, right, the, the air needs to come out, it needs to escape, you need that little vent top. Fermenting things can really cause that feeling, that burning sensation, right? Carbohydrates are gonna give you way more trouble. That's why a lot of people with SIBO and Candida will do a low FODMAP diet. Um, they'll try something like that to, to just make sure that they're not eating those fermentable carbohydrates. So any, any issues of bloating, it's very, very rare. I, I mean, I wouldn't blame bloating on animal proteins. I just wouldn't. I think animal proteins are, are critical. They're probably the most important macronutrient period for overall health. I'm convinced of it now. I don't care what doctor or dietitian or whoever wants to come at me and tell me that I'm wrong about that. I've done my own research and that's my opinion and that's it. I think animal proteins are just hands down the most important food that we take in as humans, 100%. And I think the history and anthropology backs me up on that 100%. So important stuff, right? What else we got here? Ah, this is a good one. Uh, question about cold showers. Do you still get the full benefit if you don't get your head wet? I don't wash my hair every day and therefore don't put my head under the cold water in the mornings. Wondering if that takes away from the benefits or not. Okay, so first things first, obviously there are a lot of health benefits to cold showers. Dr. Rhonda Patrick talks about this, Wim Hof talks about it, reduce stress levels, um, re increase happiness, really, it's a, a natural antidepressant. They've actually tested it clinically against SSRIs and it performs just as well. Daily cold exposure, um, you can turn white fat to metabolically active brown fat, which actually helps you burn more calories, boost your immune system, it does all sorts of stuff, okay? Tons of health benefits. but. The reason why I'm gonna tell you not to worry about that is because I think too many people get hung up on the health benefits of a cold shower and they forget the number one reason why I like cold showers is mindset training. And what do I mean by that? I don't ever want to take a cold shower. I don't. I could sit here and tell you I'm looking forward to my cold shower tomorrow. No, that's not true. Getting in the shower is gonna suck the first 10 seconds are gonna suck even worse, right? The next five minutes is probably gonna suck too. And then when I get out, it's only 
about five to 10 minutes later that I feel like I took three shots of espresso and I took a happy pill and I'm happier than I've ever been in my life every single morning and I feel like a million bucks, right? Going into it sucks. This is the benefit of struggle. This is the benefit of mindset training. What I loved was Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, was just on Ben Greenfield's podcast and he talked about this. Ben was asking him how he manages stress. Obviously, this guy runs a multi-billion dollar company. He's more stressed than any of us can ever imagine, right? And he was talking about the mindset training of cold showers. He only takes cold showers now. Why? Because it's a little win at the beginning of the day. You say, I don't want to take this fucking shower. And then you do it anyway. You get in and you do it anyway. And you get out when you're done, right? That's it. And then all of a sudden, it sounds silly, but it's the same way that I make my bed every morning. Why do I make my bed every morning? Because if I had a really chaotic, crazy day, I was out and about and everything went wrong and I get home, if I walk into my room and my sheets are in shambles and my pillows are off the bed, it's like, ah, shit, one more thing. It just feels chaotic, right? We must train our mindset at all times. Making my bed is non-negotiable. Cold shower is non-negotiable. My meditation in the morning is non-negotiable right? All these things are very important. So don't forget, if you're getting in a cold shower, you're still getting in the cold shower. I don't care if your head goes under. For the health benefits, yes, I would love to see your head go under. Absolutely. I think it's a really big deal. There are actually more nerve endings on your face than virtually anywhere else in your body. There is a scientific biochemical reason why the cold shower will be more effective if you put your face under, okay? It will, absolutely. So maybe try to put your face under, not necessarily a hair. You could try that, wear a cap or something, I don't know. Um, but all in all, I'm just happy you're taking the cold shower. It's a mindset win. It's a mindset victory every single day. It makes you a stronger person, okay? It's really important. I love that Jack talked about that, being such a high-stress guy in his position. I love that he talked about that. That's most of the reason I do cold showers is just straight up for the, the mindset benefits. But yeah, I do cold showers. I do sauna. I have a sauna a few feet away from me in my garage and all these things. So I, I love it for the, for the health benefits as well but it really is a mindset thing. So if you're doing the cold shower, I'm happy. Don't even worry about it, right? What else we got? Any comments coming in here? What do we got? All right, let's see what else we got for questions here. Oh, this was a good one, cool, too, because uh, for some reason, there's a ton of women in Clovis who are in the healthcare profession. I found out an interesting statistic that one out of 10 people in America are employed by the healthcare profession because it is so bloated and absurd, right? Um, so there's a great book on this called Undoctored. If you guys haven't picked up Undoctored, especially if you work in the healthcare industry, you must read Undoctored. Fantastic book. Okay, so uh, let's touch on this because we're running out. We've got a couple minutes left here. From your point of view, in the functional medicine world, how do you view nurses in the functional medicine setting? Also, do you have any resources on how to go about looking into being a functional medicine nurse for those that have their BSN RN degree? Yes, 100%. Look no further than ifm.org. I'm gonna type that in because I can do that with one hand. ifm.org. Go to ifm.org. That is the Institute for Functional Medicine, okay? At ifm.org, you're gonna find everything you need to get involved in functional medicine. Now, you can even get, if you're a licensed anything, you can get involved. I think you can take the course to become a functional practitioner. I think you can do that. Um, and then there are different levels. Like I only work with functional medicine, medical doctors. That means they have to have a conventional medical degree or I'm not trusting them with my body. Um, that's just me, right? Because I can go to natural paths and all these things and it's kind of like I'm treating myself at that point, right? So I like working with the people that are way more high level knowledge than me. I don't want to go to somebody with the same knowledge level as me. I don't want that, right? So um, I only go to functional medicine medical doctors. That means they have a medical degree and are also a functional medicine practitioner, preferably certified by the Institute of Functional Medicine. So go check that out. But there are also people who are not certified at all. I know nurses, I know phlebotomists, I know endocrinologists, all these people that are trained in conventional medicine that work under a functional medicine doctor. So the functional medicine medical doctor runs his own practice. It's up to him if he hires you. Just get your resume together and start applying at functional medicine doctors around, around you. You know, go work under a functional medicine doctor, learn that way, and then ask them, hey, how do I get into this thing? I wanna take this further. How do I learn more about functional medicine? What courses do I take? They'll point you in the right direction. But if you are uh, an RN, then absolutely get into the world of functional medicine. Why wouldn't you? You finally get to go help people in a way that's meaningful rather than just treating symptoms all day. 
right? Your hands aren't tied the same way anymore. That's why most functional medicine doctors don't take insurance. They're not tied. They're not bound by this nonsense conventional medicine, right? They have way more freedom in their practice. I love my functional medicine medical doctor. He's amazing. I'm friends with all the nurses there. We have a grand old time. Last time I was in there getting my IV, we're making jokes, laughing, talking about Kelly Brogan's work, all this amazing stuff. Like I have a really good time when I go in there. It's fantastic, right? It's awesome. So uh, what else we got here? Institute for Functional Medicine, lovely. Some products like sausages or chocolates state they have less than 2% of the following and will list some ingredients not approved. I'm not entirely worried about it, really not. Uh, it's not a huge, huge deal. It sucks, yeah, I mean, it's just the best you're gonna do in a grocery store. Like, we get pastured, uh, pasture-raised pork bacon from a local farm here. It's completely different. Tastes nothing like bacon in the store. Their sausage tastes nothing like sausage that you get in the store. So it's tricky. It's just, I, I don't buy this stuff. You know, like I, I, do I love bacon? Yes, I love bacon. If I go to a restaurant, I'm gonna eat a ton of bacon. I don't care. I'm not even worried about it. Don't even worry about the sourcing of it, right? I'm just gonna eat the bacon. If bacon's in front of me, I'm gonna eat the shit out of some bacon. I don't buy bacon, right? I've, I've, I've had people in the Clovis Academy that like think I'm weird for that. They're like, dude, bacon, so I think bacon is a pain in the ass to cook. So I don't like cooking it. Um, sausage, I don't buy sausage either. I just don't. Um, but that's just me, you guys, you know, you guys know I'm super boring. I eat the same foods, foods over and over and over again. It's just easier. I think life is easier that way. Um, but there's obviously, I mean, I, I couldn't even tell you a good, well, I guess Applegate, Applegate's probably as good as it gets for these packaged meats, like bacon, sausage, all these kinds of things. They have grass fed beef, hot dogs, look for Applegate. But again, you're going to pay three times the price that you're going to pay for the crappy, the crappy Oscar Mayer sausage or whatever. Or the Jimmy Dean sausage, right? That's it. So if you want, if you want to get those things, then be prepared to spend the money on them. Don't don't buy the cheap cheap crap, right? You, you don't need that stuff in your body. You just don't. And those little things add up. It's a big deal. Um, what else we got? Okay, uh, one more. I'm going to end on this one. Okay, so this was a question from one person. I'm going to read this to you because it's important. Are veggies better cooked or raw? What's the difference? Is there a point of the fast that BMI increases, like 36 to 48 hour frame? Does it go up a little with each fast or how does it increase? Is autophagy generally on day two or three? Will I stay in ketosis after a 2.5 day fast if I eat 35 grams of carbs? I listen to the fasting podcast, but don't recall how often it's safe to do a 24 or 48 hour fast for autophagy. Is there anything to help sleep day two and three? I was real restless and woke up frequently. Tried chamomile tea, no luck. Okay, that's one question from one person. Listen, stop. Stop, okay? Whoever you are, I'm not calling you out. I'm doing this out of a place of love. You probably have a custom plan for me, I can tell. Stop, stop this. I didn't put any of that in your custom nutrition plan, none of it. I know that I didn't, because I write them, right? There's a reason why. What you were doing here is what I talked about in the episode, Stop Being a Tweaker. You're consuming all my content, and I love you for that. That's amazing. I really love that you're consuming my content. It's so valuable that you know all of these things. But remember, you're talking about day two or three over here, day two or three of sleep, and you're talking to me about fasting and autophagy and ketosis and 35 grams of carbs. And wait, what? Hit your macros with approved foods. You're done. That's it. That's your custom plan. So the reason why I say this to you is because you are going to derail. If you keep this up, you're absolutely going to derail. That many questions, trying to explore that many things all at the same time, there's no reason to do that right? It's going to lead to overwhelm. It's going to get frustrating. It's kind of a, a, a self-sabotage thing. Oh, no. Alarm's going off, right? That's actually my alarm. I need to change that on the AMA nights because of my alarm telling me no more screens for the night. I actually have an alarm to tell me that. But listen, whoever asked me this question, you are tweaking way too much. You're taking on way too much information. You don't even know what Clovis is yet. Okay, like if you don't give me 30 days of my plan that I wrote for you, your plan as is, you don't even know what Clovis is. And now what happens is I can't quantify or track anything. Okay, so if you're brand new to a plan and I give you your plan, and I say, look, this is all you got to do. And you go, okay, well, on day three, I did a 24 hour fast. And then one day later, I did a 48 hour fast. And then this day, I only ate 35 grams of net carbs because I wanted to stay into ketosis. And then I tried this supplement for my sleep. And then I blah, 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 right? And you start this stuff, right? I no longer know what's working and what isn't working. I almost can't help you at that point. 
I don't know, I have no idea what you're doing. You're introducing far too many variables all at once and that's not good, okay? So remember, consistency is king. I started my quote unquote paleo journey probably seven years ago now, right? And I'm very healthy right now. And I have explored all the things that you're talking about. I can give you advice on every single one of them. I have clients that are doing every single one of those things. But for you to put those all into an email that way lets me know immediately where your head is at. And where your head is at is you're taking in information from me like you're trying to get a sip of water from a fire hose. That's what you're doing, okay? So you have to be very, very careful with this because overwhelm is very real. And then what happens is the roller coaster happens because now you're trying to keep track of your macros. And then you're trying to keep track of, well, did I eat 35 grams of carbs? And then what if you start measuring ketones? Well, am I in ketosis? And now my sleep sucks because I'm in ketosis. Maybe there's a supplement for that. Or maybe I'll just do a 48-hour fast and then I'll feel better. But I can't remember if autophagy happens at day two or day three. So I really want to make sure I go at least two days to make sure I get autophagy. Do you see how your brain is spinning already? You, it's not going to be sustainable, period. It's just not. Consistency is king. You need to go with the Clovis plan as long as you possibly can. And then eventually start adding in these things, right? You want to add in something, add in a cold shower. It's about the only thing I want you doing right now. Other than that, take your custom plan and follow it exactly as I wrote it for you, okay? There needs to be specific reasons why we do things. People just decide they're going to fast and they don't even know why they're going to fast. Or I say, hey, if you really want to fast, I have this ebook, The Perfect Fasting Protocol, that's $27. Go learn all about it. I'm like, I'm not buying that book. It's 27 bucks. Okay, then you don't care about it that much. You really don't care about learning all that much. So then don't do it because you don't know why you're doing it. You're not tracking. You're not quantifying, right? It's the same way when we talk about bad science. That's why they do these randomized control trials because they control specific things or test one variable at a time. So I, it's impossible for me. When you come back to me at the end of 30 days, like, well, I lost eight pounds and I really wanted to lose 30. And I'm like, okay, well, why don't we walk through what happened? If you throw a dozen things at me that I didn't tell you to do, now it gets tricky. You see what I mean? So to answer those questions directly would all be blanket statements, you know, like one, it says, is there a point of the fast that BMI increases? I don't know what you mean by that. I don't think that you, that you're fully, you may be talking about BMR. I think you may be talking about BMR, noradrenaline spiking and spiking your BMR, which happens very quickly when you're fasting, um, probably 16 hours around there. Um, yeah, if I had to guess a BMR somewhere around there. Autophagy, again, you have no way of knowing if you're completely fat adapted and you're fasting all the time. Autophagy could happen in as much as 18 hours, right? Maybe it'll take 24 hours. If you're not fat adapted, it could take 36 hours. It could take 72 hours, right? Apoptosis is probably going to take 72 hours. Um, and autophagy is completely different from apoptosis. So if you don't know the difference between the two, don't work towards these things. You don't know why you're doing it. You see what I mean? So it gets really tricky. Um, ketosis, why do you want to be in ketosis? Do you know what ketosis is? You see? So this is where you, you can, it can start getting real confusing. You're going to confuse yourself in a big way. So I think it's important to end on this note. I want you guys to hear this message, right? Um, again, yeah, you listen to the fasting podcast, but I don't recall. So that's the thing. It's like, I listen to the fasting podcast, but I don't recall. You're getting info, 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 info. And you don't really grasp fully all of it. That gets dangerous. That's also what I'm here for. Like if you are, this is why I switched to a membership platform, everybody. The reason why I switched to a $27 membership platform and you can only get custom macros from me if you are a member, that's it, period. I don't care who complains about it, is so you can email me when you have a question and I can answer you and I can help you through it. And when you say, hey, I really want to try a fast and I say, why? And I wait for you to respond and you're not really quite sure, then I say, okay, maybe we don't think about this right now. Or let's talk about why you might want to fast or all these things. It's really important, you know. Consistency is everything. Don't take on too much at once. You're going to set yourself up for failure. Set yourself up for success, okay? All my goods are arriving tomorrow, so I'm starting my first 30 days Friday. So excited for this new lifestyle. Yes, I'm a little scared, but I know this is what's best for me and my body. I know it's what's best for you and your body. Absolutely. And I'm super pumped, and I hope you enjoyed that video that I tagged you in with my dad because that's really, really important stuff. Uh, cholesterol is an obsession of mine. You are in very good hands, I promise you, okay? Um, what else we got? Off topic, a long time ago, you mentioned a speed reading course. Yes, quick learning, K-W-I-K, K-W-I-K-L-E-A-R-N-I-N-G. Okay, something that I want to tell you guys too, all of you, 
all of you that keep saying, I listened to this, or I heard, saw this, or I heard this, and I don't remember. Clovis.show, search function. I built it for you. Use it. Clovis.show, search function. Search speed reading. Search reading. Search fasting. Search cholesterol. Search blood pressure. Search fitness, search strong list, search chocolate, search children, whatever you want. Go to clovis.show and search and look at what's there. And you're going to find show notes, links, and resources for every single episode. So if you search speed reading, something pops up where I talked about speed reading, there's probably going to be a direct link to quick learning. Understand that. Always use clovis.show. That's an easy go-to spot. Okay. What else we got? So maybe I missed this, but how do you know what your body weight should be? I know there are those charts online, but I should go. Yeah, again, it's a BMI thing. Um, I, I don't care. So that's the thing. Is, <laughs> that's kind of where I'm at with it. It's like I, I really, it doesn't bother me. I don't know what my set body weight should be. The, the only way that you could know that is like to go to a BMI chart, which is virtually useless. Because again, you could be six foot four and 260 pounds and look like the rock. Or you could be six foot four and 260 pounds and look like a really big fat bald guy, right? They're, they're both 260 pounds and both six foot four. The body weight means nothing. It means nothing. Body weight means nothing to me. I don't care. It doesn't interest me. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it. I would just continue, continue your plan and let the body do the work. All that we're doing with Clovis is removing all the outside bullshit so your body can do what it's designed to do, which is regulate itself and get to where it wants to be. I've worked with women before that are like, I'm 109 pounds and I want to get smaller. And I'm like, it's not going to happen unless you do something really unhealthy. Your body doesn't want to be smaller than that, right? So remember that the body's going to get to where it wants to be. Now, if you have a significant amount of weight to lose, the same thing rings true. It's going to take that body weight off as it wants to, right? And you just need to give it the tools that it needs to do so. And if it's not happening for some reason, then maybe we need to tweak. But first, we need to make sure that consistency is king and we're doing everything we can to get to make that thing happen. Now, if it's not happening after a long time and there's obesity involved, there's probably hormones at play, either insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, or some kind of hormone disruption, thyroid disruption or something like that, which is why I wish that everybody had a functional medicine medical practitioner, because a uh, medical doctor, because there are some things that I'm not even going to be able to untangle without blood work. And I can't order you blood work. I can't interpret your blood work. I'm not a doctor, right? So sometimes if you're feeling stuck or something, you need to take it further and, um, and do what's necessary to get to the bottom of things, you know? Um, what else we got? Can your fats, even though approved, stall weight loss? Yeah. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, remember, protein is basically its own macro. And then energy and carbo uh, energy is pro is, I'm sorry, energy is fat and carbohydrates. Fat can absolutely stall your weight loss, 1 million percent, 1 million percent. So if you, an average person, average person, they're just sitting around doing nothing all day and they were to eat zero carbohydrates, zero, they would burn maybe 150 grams of pure fat. So if you just ate nothing but pure fat all day, you'd burn about 150 grams. If you sat around and the body was just burning calories using what it had available to it, about 150 grams of fat. Now you have these ketogenic people that are trying to stay in ketosis or whatever, it's like they're eating 200, 300 grams of fat. And they're like, why am I not losing weight? You know what I mean? Like fat, absolutely. It's going to get stored at energy, as energy. If you're giving the body too much energy, it's going to store energy. 100% yes, fat can stall weight loss. That's absolutely true, which is why it kind of drives me nuts. People are like, you got to eat fat to burn fat. You got to eat fat to burn fat, which is kind of true. But then people run away with it and they get themselves into trouble. So anyway, Hope that answers your question. It is now 9.09 p.m., everybody. This is AMA number 64. Uh, don't know what it's called yet. I'll name it on the back end after we after I go through all the different things that I talked about on this episode. I hope it was helpful to you. I hope you learned a lot of stuff. Click the happy face. Click the like button. Click the heart button. Click the smiley thing. All that stuff. Uh, doing a ton of work on Instagram lately. So go look at the Instagram profile. That is Instagram.com slash the Clovis culture. Let me give you a link. Instagram.com slash the Clovis culture. Go follow. Go follow everybody. You can also find me at Instagram.com slash Justin Nolk. You can find my personal page, which is really cool. Dana White gave me front row tickets to the UFC this past Saturday. That was crazy. So you get to see behind the stuff, behind the scenes, stuff like that in my Instagram stories and all that. Um, life can be pretty cool sometimes. I'm going to be out in Norway in a few weeks. and I'm going to be doing a ton of stories and stuff like that from Norway. 
lots of exciting adventures. That's going to be great. So I'll take you guys with me on that. You can follow along on all my journeys and travels, right? So get on Instagram, follow that. Um, going to be some big changes coming up with Instagram with Clovis Culture uh, moving forward. It's going to be awesome. I'm super excited. You guys are awesome. Thanks for being here. Thank you for the likes and the loves and the happies and the laughy faces and the smiley faces and all the things. I appreciate it so much. I love you guys. Thank you. It's AMA number 64. My name is Justin Nault. I had a pleasure being with you tonight, everybody. Now go turn off your screens and get some sleep. I'll see you tomorrow in the private Facebook groups. All right. Good night. Love you. Bye.